Hey y'all, in this video we'll be drawing a paint blob which is kind of random but for my opinion it's fun to be finding random pictures from Pinterest and trying to recreate them because it is a very great exercise for practicing adding your shadows and highlights so let's get started. We're gonna start off with a blank white canvas and its size doesn't really matter because you can either crop the canvas or make it bigger anytime you want. So now I'll be using a Procreate pencil in color black to um, kind of start sketching out my paint blob and again you don't need to follow all the proportions because it's just a paint blob but remember to not um, change its shape too much because then it will affect the placement of the shadows and the highlights. The next step is optional, but I like adding some of the shadows to my sketch. For example, we have a little bit at the top, on the right side, and right in the middle. So now we can go ahead and get started with the coloring. So I made a new layer and placed it underneath our sketch layer. And as you can see, I changed my opacity of the sketch layer to about from 20 to 30%. And now I'm simply using a paint bucket tool. Um, to select the main color, I would say, the main color of the paint block and I made it a little bit brighter. And now we're just gonna go ahead and start outlining these little circle paint blobs, just like so. And the brush that I like to use for outlining is either any brush in calligraphy section, especially syrup or syrup. And monoline um, works just as good. So for the next few minutes, we will be outlining our sketch and maybe even adding some adjustments. And then we will just simply use the paint bucket tool to fill them in. And then we'll be ready to add all the shadows and highlights. I'm pretty happy with how the shape has turned out, so now we're gonna go ahead and either disable the layer with our sketch, or we can also set its opacity to zero. I'll just simply turn that off. And now, this is literally the most important step. Make sure to have your alpha lock on with the layer with your outline, because it will make adding shadows and highlights so much easier, because then you will not have paint spool over onto the other layers. And I will be using my favorite brush, um, for adding shadows and highlights, which is soft brush. And again, it's already pre-made, don't need to download anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark all the shadows, not all of them, but like the lightest shadows, just like so. So I will go through my shape. We have a dark one over here, but I'll still mark it with a lighter color, just like so. And also make sure to not forget these um, little two circles to the right and to the left of the main paint block. As you can see, now I'm on to adding the darkest shadow onto this little baby paint blob and I'm still using my self brush because it is really useful when adding shadows and highlights and the reason to that is because as long as you don't push um, too hard with your apple pencil, it will also act like a smudge tool. So there you go, you have a really useful brush, um, a two-in-one brush I would even say because it's a paint brush and a smudge tool. This is looking pretty good, so now 
I feel like you have all probably noticed that I didn't add these three little highlights to the baby paint blob and the reason to that is um, because I like making adding highlights my very last step so now we're just gonna go ahead and move on onto the other tiny paint blob and I'll be using the same brush and the same technique to color that one in. We're done with the little ones, so I'm currently working on adding more deeper and darker shadows onto the main paint block. And I'm still using the salt brush, and I'm still using the color picker tool to select a slightly darker color. And you can also change the color's um, visibility, I would say, um, by applying more or less pressure on your apple pencil. <laughs> I noticed that this area right here got way too dark so I'm selecting a fairly light color and adding the little highlight onto there. So far so good and now we can go ahead and start adding the darkest color of all and again I used my favorite color picker tool and you can Activate it either by holding down on your screen for, I think, at least 3 seconds or you can also click on this little square in between the size and the opacity bar. And I also fix this little highlight that was missing over there. And now we can go ahead and work on adding the darkest color for the next few minutes. And you will see it a lot on the right side and right in the middle of the paint block. shadows so now we'll be adding the light orange highlights and don't get them mixed up with the white highlights because that will be our last step or at least one of our last steps so um, surprisingly I didn't use a color picker tool um, to add the orange highlights and I just selected a pretty light color from the color wheel and I'll be adding some of these on the left side on this edge over here and then we also have um, a lot of them in between the shadow on the right and the shadow right in the middle of the paint block. This is the step that's gonna make our little paint blob come to life. So what we're gonna be doing is adding these little white highlights all across the paint blob. And um, for this task, I usually use any of the calligraphy brushes and monoline works just as well. And notice how my um, white isn't the brightest shade of white and it's slightly grayish. Um, and I just felt like it would make it look more realistic. So now I will be um, looking at my reference picture and drawing similar highlights onto my work. This little guy definitely had a glow up, so um, we can also mess around with um, the highlight settings so we can either change its opacity, add some Gaussian blur, um, don't add too much of it though because um, the highlights will literally disappear, so let me just leave it on 2-3% to and we can also go ahead and enable the smudge tool and kind of blur out the edges a little bit.
I like where this is going and I love how this is turning out, but there's still one more thing that we can do to make our artwork look even more realistic, which is adding the paper-like background to make it look like we spilled some paint onto the paper. So we can either download a um, paper-like background that you can find either on Pinterest or Safari, or we can make it right here and procreate it by ourselves. So let me go ahead and change our canvas's size. I will go ahead and crop it a little bit since our reference picture is gone and isn't taking up as much space. And I'll be using a top brush, I um, mean not top, but chalk brush in a grayish color and I'm just gonna brush over the canvas or the background, however you want to call it, just like so. And I will switch between the lighter whites and the darker um, gray colors. We cannot forget to add the shadows um, that are coming from the paint blob, so I switched back to, again, my favorite stop brush to add the shadows. So first we're going to add the lighter ones, and again I use the um, color picker tool. Just like so, we have a little bit on the side, and can't forget about the little um, tiny guys over here. And then let's go ahead and pick a darker color, and kind of smudge it out, just like so. And again, this little step right here, which was adding the paper-like texture and the shadow that's gotten from the paint blob made this look so much better. This paint blob literally had a glow up. Okay guys, so now I'm just adding the final touches and fixing all the imperfections. And this is basically the end result. I hope that you like this video and I hope that you found this video somewhat helpful. Make sure to follow my channel right now for more useful tutorials and tips and time-lapse videos about art and procreate. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!